So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bernadette Spishak, and I am from Bezoet and Research Institute. And the following few minutes, I would like to say a few words about our research work related to the modification of PCCT method. With the implementation of GTN model for the determination of the G integral, it's quite long, but I hope after the presentation, it will be more clear what we were working with. So the background of this research work is related to the aging of the reactor pressure vessels. There are more than 400 reactors uh, in operation all around the world. And from them, 75% uh, is already over 25 years old. Therefore, it's uh, quite necessary to have more information about the changes of the material properties resulted from the aging of the reactors. Um, one of the solutions which has been found is uh, to place sharp specimens inside the reactors. Therefore, these specimens have gone through the same aging procedure as the reactor pressure vessel, and we can determine relevant material properties from them. However, as uh, the reactors are getting older, these specimens as, are also running out. And to have more information, we should use them to create additional um, minus sized versions. So one of the research topics is related to these uh, mini CT specimens. And uh, in the following, I would like to say a few words about how we can determine one from mini CT the fracture toughness values. For this, uh, the content of uh, my presentation is built up from the following steps. Uh, first of all, we used finite element simulations for uh, determine uh, later the fracture toughness. Therefore, it was essential to determine the GTM parameters. Uh, in the first step, we have used uh, small size, flat patch, ten size specimens with artificial neural network. And uh, thereafter, in the second step, we applied them for one TCT specimens, which uh, was validated with this version. And uh, because we wanted to generate the G integral, uh, we carried out measurements and compared the results from one TCT with the measurements. Thereafter, however, this method is quite time consuming. Therefore, later the VCTT method, which is uh, the short version of virtual crack closure technique was modified where we also implemented the GTM parameters. And in the final step, the same simulation steps was done for the mini CT, except for the compliance method, which was simulated in this case. So in the followings, I would like to introduce these steps in more details. The damage parameters were determined with small size anti specimens, a total of uh, 19 GTM parameters uh, version were created, which were specified using the floating hi hypercube sampling method. Uh, this approach uh, is randomly grenade points in n dimensional space defined by the domain of variables. In contrast to the Monte Carlo simulation, the space is partially partitioned according to the number of samples. So the probabilities of the space part are the same and those a more uniform distribution can be achieved with it. And therefore it's essential for us that uh, the GTM parameters are uniformly distributed during this 90 parameter generation. Uh, thereafter, these results were used for the training of the artificial neutral network. Here the GTM parameters of Q1 and Q2 and the standard deviation were fixed. Uh, those which change the total of five parameters in the optimization test. Uh, here, the Bayesian regularization method was used, and also due to the characteristic of the curve, the displacement values were taken for given force values. With this, we were able to determine the GTM parameters for this given material, which was the 15H to MFA material. Uh, after this, the next task was to validate the GTM parameters with the help of normal CT specimens. Therefore, on standard CT test uh, and simulations were carried out, like it can be seen from the diagram. Uh, it was for two prac exercise, and from the curves, it can be seen that they are going very well. Therefore, the GTM parameters are working well for this material. Uh, thereafter, because the integral can be determined the, the ASTM E1820-2020 standard, the stands, it stands for both testing and simulation cases. So the crack progression rate was the same in the simulation and the measurements. 
and the test was performed with 30% uh, percentage unloading, but the evaluation was performed according to the standard. So on the left side, we can see the comparison of the force curves as a function of the LID values, and on the right side, the results of the evaluation based on the standard. Uh, based on these, it can be seen that the simulation skills a little bit below the measurements, but still they are quite in good agreement. Um, and also we wish to make these calculations uh, faster because the previous version was done in 3D simulation. Uh, and also it would be much simpler that we don't have to use the previously introduced standard. Uh, we need the following calculation with the virtual aircraft closure technique. This technique is an energy-based method. Basically, we have to define an energy volume um, where the CAC would propagate. In our case, we changed this idea and made it so that not the energy would be dri the driving force of the propagation, but the critical failure value, which is determined the GTM method. Therefore, this way we can simulate the real crack propagation at the same time and determine the GTM values uh, and the actual crack lengths. Uh, here, two simulation versions were generated as uh, with GTM model. A model of the unloads was, has been constructed and evaluated with the standard. And thus, in the second version, the G integral values have been extracted di directly from the uh, simulation. Here can be seen uh, the results. Uh, it is well seen, but that the curves are going together. Also, in case of the determined fracture toughness, the deviations uh, from this measurement is quite small. Um, therefore, it is, I think, can be seen that this new technique is uh, very usable for the G-integral determination. As you can see, the simulation with VCCT method, where only simulation was, uh, where the results were straight coming from the simulation, the difference was only 2.4%. So, as this method was usable for the normal CT, we also made uh, monitorized CT specimens. It can be seen that they are quite small from this picture. Uh, altogether, six uh, specimens were done. Uh, oh, sorry. Mm, so, here we made 3D uh, simulations to also detect GTM parameters are very usable for the many CT specimens. Here, the real geometry and tracker kink was used, and uh, the same boundary conditions were applied for the specimen. A quadratic, uh, um, a quarter of the uh, specimen was simulated, so there was two symmetry cases and also the displacement was uh, put on the pin. And why we needed to use the real geometry sizes, I would like to say about it a few more. Uh, and to show these effects, uh, the results are shown in this diagram for four cases. Uh, in the first case, the real geometry and the realistic prehacking was used. Uh, as it can be seen, this version is, good, is going together with the measurements. However, in the second case, the real geometry size was untouched, but uh, in, instead of the real bracket size, an average version was used, which is very uh, widely used in case of normal CT specimens. But in case of miniaturized specimens, it can be seen that it's overestimating the results. Uh, the truth can be seen, uh, the truth is that this case is the same as. Uh, the third case where the theoretical size was used, which was first determined from the drawing of the CT specimens. And it is also going above and also going together with uh, the real size version where the average bracket was done. And uh, finally, the fourth version is where the theoretical size was used with real prokacking, and it can be seen that this is also going above the measured values. Therefore, it's essential that in case of miniaturized CT specimens, the geometry has large effect on the results, and uh, this should be uh, investigated further in the future, which parameters are affecting mostly these results. Mm. So based on this, it can be seen from that there are several uncertainties which occur in case of the 3D simulations. 
And due to this, the usage of the VCCT 2D simulation for the determination of the G integral would be more reliable because uh, uh, we can omit the uncertainty from the um, geometry. As it was already validated with the normal CT specimens, uh, therefore, in this case, we, don't, we didn't aim to compare the displacement force curves of the simulation with the measurements, only the fractured toughness values, as this is a geometry independent material properties. Here can we see the VCCT model of the mini CT specimen. The received values in this case were uh, 300. Uh, 17.8 kilojoule per square meter, which is around 6% lower than the results received from the, from the test, made on the normal CT specimen, and uh, around 8.5% compared to the mini CT test results. However, it is still in a reasonable uh, difference, and based on the, our assumption, this, the shift results give a good starting point for the de development of this simulation method. So to summarize uh, our work, uh, ENM was used for the determination of GTM parameters. Thereafter, they were validated in normal mini CT specimens. Finally, a new VCCT method was developed for the calculation of the G integral. In the future, we think this method can be well applicable to non-standard cases, for example, transfer material properties from small scale to large scale components, also, our future plan is to further develop this VCCT model. So not only the fracture toughness could be determined, but also with the implementation of this value, and when the brittle ductile transient zone could be investigated. Uh, and finally, I would like to say thank you for the Practices project, as these results are preliminary calculations, which could would be used up later in this project and would be uh, developed further. Thank you very much. Thank you.